Hey guys, it's Mike, and in this video, we're going to be drawing a fighting scene, and I'm going to show you guys the principles that I use when I'm um, composing a scene of two characters fighting. So I started off with drawing a rectangle. That's going to be the frame of our scene. And I'm going to start off with dividing the paper into thirds, or this frame into thirds. And I'm going to draw one of our characters on the right third. So the idea with this scene is going to be one character is going to be leaping at the other, kind of catching him off guard, and it's going to be an upshot. So if you saw the video on drawing characters in perspective in an upshot, you'll see some of the uh, tips and techniques that we use in that video. So I'm starting with the head and tilting the shoulders slightly, curving it because it's an upshot. And here we have the general guideline for the upshot. Remember, it gets more narrow uh, towards the top. Using simple shapes, not focusing on details, this stage of the drawing is all about uh, finding the pose. And the best way to do that is to use uh, simple shapes. So I have the head, torso, and the hips. The head is going to be much smaller than normal, and the hips are going to be much bigger than normal. Below the hips, I draw the, the legs. And you can already see the angle uh, that I'm after. He's slightly tilted. And those horizontal lines of the shoulders and the waist are curved like sat faces because it's an upshot. Okay, so next I'm going to draw the shoulder that is closest to us with a curve. And normally the elbow, which I'm going to use, or so I'm going to draw with a circle. Normally it's at the bottom of the rib cage, but I'm going to draw it slightly higher for this view because of the, of the perspective. And for the elbow, I just use a circle. Very simple. And now coming out at an angle, I'm going to draw the forearm. Just two lines. Really easy. And then for the hand, it's going to be, you know, like a square or a rectangle. And he's going to be holding a sword. And so I'm going to draw the hilt. And the sword is going to be angled towards the upper left. And so I'm not even worried about what kind of sword this is or what the details of it are. I'm just worrying about the position. And that's all I'm focused on is the position. And to make things easy, um, oh, first I'm drawing in his other arm. Again, circle for the elbow and getting more narrow as we head towards the wrist because this arm is going away from us. And just like in my videos on hands, I just try to find the palm shape first. And so I'm just placing that for the hand. For his head, I'm going to erase it and redraw it because I, I want to make sure that the head is smaller than normal. So we have that perspective going for us. And also I want to point out that his left arm, the top part of the arm is shorter than the forearm, but on the other side, it's, it's the opposite. The forearm is smaller, shorter length than the top part of the arm. So now for the other character, I'm going to draw him on the other third at an angle. And for this scene to have a dynamic feel, I want to create depth. So this character is going to be a smaller. And I drew his head and tilted his shoulders. He's also going to be um, viewed in an upshot. So just like the first character, I'm going to draw on his shoulder. This time I'm going to use a big circle for the shoulder. Zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. And he's going to be mid-swing. So he's going to be coming out all epic-like mid-swing. So his arm is going to be coming across his body using a circle for his elbow. And now his forearm and a square for his hand that's grabbing the sword. So now I'm going to place the sword just like the other character, thinking about the angle that I want, um, want it to have. And so I'm leaving room for the other fist, which I'm going to place with another square right there. Then for that arm, uh, you just draw it behind the first arm down to the elbow and coming back up towards the shoulder. So after this, we'll move on to drawing the legs. So the idea for this guy is he's going to be leaping at this guy in the foreground, kind of like surprising him or something. So I'm drawing his legs behind that sword down to his knee. Since he's leaping, his lower leg is going to be, you're not going to see it, so it's just his knee and then another shape for his foot. 
And then the other leg is going to go behind the sword, down to his knee. And then, just to vary it a little, a little bit, you're going to see some of his lower leg right there. And then below that is his foot. So again, this um, stage of the drawing is all about using these uh, simple shapes, right? Really easy geometric shapes, uh, circles for joints. And what I, what I like about it is it's very easy to erase and to find new poses. And you haven't really invested a lot of time into the drawing. Uh, like imagine like you spent maybe 10 minutes or 20 minutes drawing an arm and it's looking great and there's a lot of detail in it. But you continue your drawing and you realize that, hey, maybe this position isn't right. And you want to change it, but there's a part of you that's like, man, I spent so long on that drawing and it's almost a lose-lose situation. You, you, the, the pose isn't strong in your mind but you don't want to change it but uh, with this me method that I I often do is I use simple shapes and I haven't invested a lot of time in it and <laughs> there's no detail so I'm not really uh, worried about erasing and so when I'm searching for the pose like I'm doing here is um, it's not really a heartbreaking to erase it so here I'm trying to find the correct angle of the sword and just to capture that feeling of uh, just he's in mid motion so you know it's just a square and two lines for each forearm and I just keep erasing it keep um, changing the angle of the forearm and the sword until I find the correct position and the same thing goes with the legs the legs is just maybe circles for knees you can see that I'm just finding the angle and it's really easy to redraw. And so, I mean, this drawing, I really had to um, struggle with this uh, sword arm for this guy. And, um, you know, it's really, um, yeah, frustrating and struggle, a struggle sometimes, but uh, don't settle for something when you know it's not working because um, you may think that adding detail will save the drawing, but the pose is really the most important thing. And so here I realized that it starts to feel better when the arms, or at least the fists, are further away from his head. And so it feels like uh, he's, he's swinging. And the feeling is what I was after. So I'm pretty happy with this position. And now I'm going to zoom out and you guys can see um, the shot, the scene that we have. And even with just simple shapes, and simple anatomy, the scene has, has in my mind, captured um, that feeling that I was after of an upshot. We have depth between the fr front guy and the back guy, and you know the the guy in the back is in is in mid motion of his swing. So what I'm doing now is I'm erasing everything and starting all over. No, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm using my kneaded eraser, and I'm just gently erasing the hard lines so that what I have left on the paper is what I like to call the ghost of an image. And what this does now is it gives me a solid foundation for the next stage, which is going to be adding in all the detail. So now I'm going into uh, sort of a time lapse and I'm just going to be adding in uh, armor for both of these characters. And I guess what I want, wanted to talk about was um, just the concept of um, drawing in different stages. And this is something that I learned in college that um, I hadn't done prior to um, school. And and so the first stage that we did was, remember, it was just about finding the pose. We, we don't think about detail. We just think about uh, simple shapes and the position of characters. Often, I like to think of it like we're directors for a movie and our characters are the actors. And we're telling them, okay, maybe you stand there, or when you swing, swing like this, or maybe stand more to the right, or more towards the left, or closer or farther. And we're constantly moving the character around until we have that um, framing and positions of characters that we want. And at that point, we don't really want to be thinking about detail, because the details 
don't I mean they matter but um, at that stage they don't matter what matters is finding that pose and that camera angle that's going to give you that feeling that you're after and then once you add in all the detail it's like icing on the cake and you have a strong pose to back everything up so that's what I'm doing in this stage is I I'm sort of like um, I did a video for Evan at um, the cartoon block and in it I was sort of talking about these concepts and I said that once you reach this stage the second stage where you add in all the details you're like it's like you're chilling and it's smooth sailing because you can turn off that part of your brain that <laughs> that is worrying about the pose and you can now focus on all the detail so when I'm going through the the armor here I'm not really worried about oh is the arm in the correct position and stuff like that because in the last um, step the last stage I've already decided that um, yeah it's it's working and I like where it is so I'm just focusing on the armor and the detail and this part is really a lot of fun uh, you can just focus on um, just drawing texture and detail and um, a lot of my inspiration for this armor was from Miyazaki's Nashka. Uh, some of you know Miyazaki, he did um, Princess Mononoke and Castle in the Sky, Spirited Away. And before he became an animation director, he actually made uh, a manga called Nashka. And it's really um, epic, it's super epic and quite brutal too, but it's, it's amazing. And so I've been reading that recently. And I'm getting a lot of my inspiration from uh, the armor that he drew in that series. So this guy near to us, I'm thinking more like um, he's more barbaric. He's got sort of a, a samurai inspired armor and he's going to be w wielding a, a heavy sword. And I'm going to try and contrast that with the guy who is, has leaped out at him and caught him off guard. So. Um, yeah, this guy is, is going to be wrapping up pretty soon and we'll get drawing on the second guy. But, um, uh, what I like about Miyazaki's uh, manga is he uses a lot of cross hatching and a lot of, uh, texture in his drawing that I don't really see, uh, nowadays. But when I work on my own story and my own manga, those are the things that I'm going to want to try and add. So now I'm working on the guy, uh, who is leaping out at the first character and I'm thinking that he's going to be um, well I'm trying to make his armor different than the guy in the front so he has um, I guess your typical knight armor but I'm giving him a breastplate and on the breastplate I'm going to give him some kind of insignia like maybe it's an eagle or a dragon and then I thought well maybe I'll give him dragon scale armor which would be um, very different than the front guy and maybe kind of cool so I'm just kind of having fun drawing in all the detail and you know when I get to his uh, face I wanted to mention that uh, recently I had a request uh, someone gave me to do a character screaming and <laughs> I was gonna have this guy screaming but then I thought uh, giving him <laughs> giving him a mask uh, and a hood would be uh, more menacing and more mysterious. Uh, not trying to be lazy or anything, but I just thought it would be more fun to draw. So screaming coming in the future. So um, and now I'm working on that crazy um, those two fists that were grabbing the sword, and um, I'm not worried at all because I solved it in the last stage, and now I can just worry about. The details of the sword so now I'm I actually um, looked up a lot of swords from Final Fantasy just to get inspired and uh, to get some ideas for different swords so this guy is gonna have I guess it's like a saber or it's, it's a really it's like a light weapon it's fast and uh, that's gonna contrast with the guy um, in front of us who is gonna be wielding more of your typical Final Fantasy um, humongous sword. Um, it sort of looks like what chefs use to chop uh, vegetables. I'm not sure what you call that. Uh, what do you call that? 
that big rectangle knife. If you guys know, leave a comment, let me know. So, um, yeah, this drawing is, is uh, wrapping up. And hopefully you guys could see just the, I guess, the process that I use and the, the, the way, the techniques that I use when I'm composing a scene. So it's all about the idea first, what you're trying to capture, and then use simple shapes, uh, simple anatomy uh, to find the pose because the pose is really the most important thing. And then once you find the pose, you gently erase it to leave a ghost to be your foundation for all the detail that you're going to add. And that's going to be um, the icing, what's going to really make your drawing sing and really uh, bring it all together. And with that, I will wrap up this video, guys. So I just want to say thanks for watching, subscribing, and liking the video. It really helps me to get my videos out there to more people, so I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.